This globally applauded episode of the DTFH is brought to you by Squarespace.com. Head to Squarespace.com forward slash Duncan for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code Duncan to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Greetings to you, sweet friends. It is I, D. Trussell, and you are listening to the Duncan Trussell Family Hour Podcast. I don't remember where I read it, but I read somewhere that if something magical happens to you, you should announce that something magical has happened to you. Actually, now that I think about it, I think that the idea is that if you cast a spell that works, you're supposed to say that the spell worked. I can't remember. Wizard rules, right? I mean, they're so difficult to remember. But there are rules out there for wizards and witches and warlocks. And I think one of the main rules is that we have to be very careful about what we say. Because sometimes, not all the time, sometimes the things that you say actually do come true. And this can happen in, the, in, a, in big ways and it can also happen in really small ways and Today happened in a really small way, which is that I was having a meeting and I was talking with someone that I'm working with and uh, we're just discussing, you know, having dogs around and what it's like to have dogs in an office. And he told me a really sad story, which is that during a meeting, someone's dog had shit on the floor of the office and they had accidentally rolled their chair backwards into the shit. I guess it happened really quick. The dog did a kind of terrorist style shit right in front of the wheels of the wheelie chair. And they were probably engrossed in like some serious conversation. And the chair went back and all that pressure and the wheel and it just smashed all the shit into the wheel and the chair. And uh, he told me he had to throw the chair away. Whatever, you know, it's just a classic like disaster, minor disaster, minor catastrophe story involving dog shit. And that brought to mind something that I've seen on the internet, which you can Google, which is from, and and probably more than, actually, you know what? I'm going to Google it right now. Let me see. There's probably, it's probably a whole genre by now. Yep. For sure. It's a genre. And the genre is uh, Roomba's activating on their own and rolling over dog shit in someone's house. And so this is just a recipe for pure unbridled horror. When you get home, you get home, you programmed your Roomba to clean the house, you get home and the Roomba has done the opposite. It has covered your house with shit. And sure, it would be easy to get into how this represents one of the many technological disruptions that has been predicted as we move towards the singularity. I could point out that this is a very small example of the potential catastrophe that happens when technology intersects and slams into biology. It's not always transhumanism. It's not always CRISPR transforming our cells so that We become stronger, less fat, or smarter. Sometimes it can go wrong. It can go Brundlefly level wrong. And that's what happens when a Roomba slides over dog shit at your house. So, you know, I just brought it up because we're talking about, I guess, tools that spread shit. Chair being a tool. Roomba being a tool. And we didn't even get to get in a conversation about it. But here's the magic part. I'm in the Uber, headed home, when my wife calls to tell me that the Roomba ran over dog shit. This happened within probably 20 minutes of talking about it at this meeting. And look, I, you know, I'm a blabbermouth. I'll admit it. It's my job. I talk all the time, and I talk too much. The other night at a party... I gave somebody like an authentic ear beating, like an eight minute, at least an eight minute ear beating about modular synthesizers. And I couldn't make myself, I was like watching my lips. I was boring myself. 
Like if my skeleton could have ripped itself out of my own body and run away from the ear beating I was giving this man, I, it would have. But I was stuck listening to my voice yap about modular synthesizers to somebody who like, I, I'm, I'm very sorry that I did that to that man. But I very rarely talk about shit smearing Roombas. And this happened within minutes of the conversation. So it reminded me of something that uh, somebody I love a lot, Michael Beckwith, talks about, which is that we, with every word, we create the universe. With everything you say, you are the universe, we're the universe is in process. And sometimes, if you're not careful, you can speak things into existence. And uh, I guess you just have to watch out, you know? I, I get, what am I saying? Am I saying we shouldn't tell stories of Roombas colliding with dog shit or that's going to happen to us? I mean, that's some Transylvania level superstitious gypsy crap. Am I saying there's some kind of strange mycelial network of energy that connects all of us and maybe i i somehow like picked up on the horror that my wife must have been feeling realizing that while she had been outside allowing our robot vacuum cleaner to clean the house she had become victim to a kind of canine sabotage a viet cong level canine sabotage which is that the being had figured out a way not just to shit on the floor, but to get that shit distributed throughout the house. Look, I don't know what I'm saying, except maybe we've got to be a little more careful with what we say into the world, what we speak into the world. Maybe the affirmation stuff is dead on, which is why I'm just saying this right now. I'm a billionaire. I have a giant cock. I have ripped abdominal muscles. My teeth are white and healthy. My bald spot last night, it grew hair again, like some blasted swath of pale land in some arid wilderness. Suddenly it sprang to life as though a magical comet had flown over it. And not only that, but you, you listening You're about to have the best luck you've ever had in your life. You're going to have a series of such incredible synchronicities after listening to this that it's going to make you feel like your brain is about to pop. It's going to make you feel like you just found out a unicorn got you pregnant. And in that very same moment, you gave a painless birth to a bag of diamonds. We have an astounding episode for you today. The delightful Derek Beckles is here with us. We're going to jump right into that. But first, some quick business. This episode of the DTFH is brought to you by Squarespace.com. Head over to Squarespace.com forward slash Duncan for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code Duncan to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. I've done a quick scan of some domain names that I think could potentially make a person a lot of money. So here we go. You could be one of the lucky people who buy up this domain name and turn it into a lot of Bitcoin right away. I'm just going to list it. You might want to pull up Squarespace right now and get ready to buy these domain names if they're not already gone. The following domain names are available right now for a smart entrepreneur out there who wants to make a buck. Resalebidet.com is available. That's right. What happens to all those bidets when people move out? What happens to all those used bidets? Drop them in a bucket of bleach, throw them online. Guaranteed there's a bidet in some junkyard right now that was used by Neil deGrasse Tyson. And that's got a high resale value guaranteed. Resalebidet.com. LuxuryBidetRentals.net. BidetXXX.com is available. If you want to get weird with some of that bidet porn, you could get that. And of course, if you're a practical man who's not into the weird stuff or lady, 
bidetrepair.com. A lot of people are embarrassed when their bidet breaks down. They feel like something's wrong with them and they're afraid to call a regular plumber. Bidetrepair.com. That could be a golden road to you becoming a multi-trillionaire. Finally, I know what you're thinking, is bidetworld.com available? No, it's not available, but it is on sale for $4,188, which only goes to show you that the bidet com bubble is still growing, baby, and there's time for you to cash in on those bidet bucks. Do it through squarespace.com. You can build a beautiful website with Squarespace. You can turn your cool idea into a new website. You can showcase your work. You can blog or publish content. And Squarespace lets you do this by giving you beautiful templates created by world-class designers. Everything's optimized for mobile right out of the box. You can buy domains and you never have to patch or upgrade anything ever. Make it yourself. Create a website by yourself. Make it stand out with a beautiful website. I have a Squarespace website and I love it. Head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code DUNCAN to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Today's episode was also made possible by stamps.com. Friends, we are inches away from an era where 3D printers use nanobots to perfectly assemble anything that you desire. And the good people at Stamps.com have brought us one step closer to this day by creating a service that you can use to actually print U.S. postage out at your own house. Think about that. This is a mind-blowing technology. In the old days, if you wanted to mail your manifesto to 700 university professors throughout the United States, you'd have to go buy stamps somewhere. But not anymore. Thanks to stamps.com, you can buy and print real U.S. postage for any letter or any package, all available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Just click, print, mail, and you're done. Stamps.com will even send you a digital scale. You can weigh your letters and packages and print the exact amount of postage every time. As someone who loves mailing out manifestos and does it on a bi-weekly basis, I can tell you that there's nothing more frustrating than to have a manifesto returned to you because of improper postage. I've used stamps.com for mailing precious DTFH posters and stickers and t-shirts. And I had a stamps.com account and it never ceased to amaze me that I didn't have to leave my house to print out glorious, powerful stamps. I don't know about you, but if I'm leaving my house, I want it to be because I'm going on a rock climbing expedition, going to the gym, going jogging, or doing some community service work. I don't want my time to be wasted, headed someplace to buy stamps. I wanna do that online. And stamps.com has made that possible. Thanks to the people at stamps.com. Do you know I used to spend over 19 hours a week buying stamps? 19 hours. And now do you know what I do at that time? I run a blood bank for children where I let children store their blood and take withdraw blood if they need to. They have blood debit cards. And it's uh, it's been quite successful. Um, and it's a great thing to teach your kids. I don't mean to smush two advertisements together here, but... It's a great way to teach your kid about savings and what better thing to save than your blood. There's no way I would have had the time or the bandwidth to create a successful blood bank for children if I'd been spending 17 hours buying postage. But thanks to stamps.com, I've changed LA for the better. Right now, use DTFH for this special offer. You'll get a four week trial, which includes postage and a digital scale. Don't wait. Go to stamps.com. Before you do anything else, click on the radio microphone at the top of the homepage and type in DTFH. That's stamps.com. Enter DTFH. Think about your precious human life plopping down the sidewalk to go buy stamps when all you got to do is go to stamps.com right now, immediately. 
Don't even take another breath until you've clicked on that radio microphone at the top of the homepage and typed in DTFH. Mail the manifesto. Start the blood bank. Change the world. Thank you, Stamps.com. Friends, if you're tired of sloshing through the opening swamp of my voice and you just want to go straight to the interviews, or maybe you want more of the swampiness of my voice, or maybe you just want to dive in deeper into the deep undergut, the underfolds, the underbelly, the pulsating proboscis of the DTFH. Maybe you just want to mainline the DTFH right into the heart of your spine. Well, there's one way for you to do that, and that's go to patreon.com forward slash DTFH and subscribe. For a few ducats a month, you'll have instant access to interviews that don't make it onto the main feed right away. Also, there's music. If you want to hear the modular synth music that I have been slowly torturing my wife with over the last few months, all you got to do is go to patreon.com. You'll find some of it there, along with opening rants not attached to any interviews and just random stuff, including access to the thriving DTFH Discord server. That's patreon.com forward slash DTFH. We also have a shop with stickers and posters. And of course, as always, thank you those of you who still use the archaic Amazon link. It's somewhere over there at DuncanTrussell.com. Scroll down. If you can find it, that's great. If not, thanks for looking. I love you. And thanks for clicking through Amazon to buy something you hear us talking about on this podcast. Whatever you buy through that link, they give us a small percentage of. Hope you'll pick up something. Do they sell vajankles on Amazon.com? Here's a, here's a, a, a free advertisement for my friend Chop, who I met recently, who runs a shop called synthetics i think they do sell vajankles on amazon.com let me take a quick look here i'm holding a vajankle right now it's a combination foot and vagina uh, I, I haven't tried i haven't humped it yet i'm not gonna i love chop but i don't know if this vajankle is a, a virgin vajankle and uh i've got a kid coming and you know i just i don't think it's a good idea to have sex with a vajankle. I don't know who, who who could have copulated with his foot, so I don't want to risk it. But it's a fan, it's it's kind of good for stress. I keep it around when I'm working. It's nice to squeeze a synthetic, hyper realistic foot with a vagina at the end of it from time to time when you're feeling overwhelmed. Today's guest is a brilliant artist who has created some amazing stuff, including TV Carnage, which is a beautiful compilation of some of. The, the crazy shit you see on late night infomercials. He also created Hot Package and most recently the Genius Comedy Series, mostly for millennials, which is now airing on Adult Swim. I hope you'll check it out. Everybody, please welcome to the Duncan Trussell Family Hour Podcast, Derek Beckles. <laughs> Derek, welcome back to the DTFH. Oh, oh shit, you got to pull that thing Oh, up. yeah, Sorry, I got man. it it's now. Hard to get it's... Used to. And you could spin it around. Oh, I can do there. this. Yeah, you can Look do that. it. There it is. There we great. go. Derek, welcome back to the DTFH. It's great to see you, man. It's been too long. It has been too long. Thank uh, you. Man, I've been checking out your new show, mostly for millennials. Yeah. It looks awesome. Thank you. It looks scary to make. Yeah. Um, you, <laughs> you, you, and, you and Eric... Yeah. You guys do the most insanely dangerous man on the street stuff that I've ever seen times a million. And I saw that you actually got arrested yeah. doing one of these. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, for sure. Well, it was I think it was like our last or to second last day of shooting too. But um yeah, man, we love doing man on the street stuff and we love escalating them like from you know just 
kind of trying to do outdo the other bits and after a while that just becomes its own math because you have to there's so many things that go into it you know it's like we want it to come off you know we want to like exercise the 13 year old part of our brain but we also yeah. want to do something that's hopefully you know just beyond like poopy fart fart sure uh, so um and sometimes that's just funny but you know what i mean like we want something that's gonna like possibly be you all let, let you know be worthy of repeat viewings but also be worthy of like doing stupid smart and smart stupidly you know so yeah it's like you guys walk this crazy tightrope in between um what you're saying which is just like you know really basic like fart jokes or whatever which is absolutely fine and then on the other side of it is some kind of like Russian, deep <laughs> Russian existentialist theater or something. Yeah. And there's a, and that's a crazy place for those two things to meet. Yeah. It's, I mean, it, I, I'm glad you think so. I really am because it's, uh, it's like the, when, we, when I almost got arrested is I was doing this bit called, uh, basically it was just save the planet. So I'm walking around in a, I have this giant like planet suit that yeah. our amazing <clears throat> wardrobe person Ryan made. And so I'm planet Earth and I'm walking around and I'm like handing out pamphlets, but I'm also throwing pamphlets in the air and I'm littering, you know, it's just like I'm the antithesis of a guy who wants to save the planet. So, and then uh, Flat Earth comes out. Andre Highlands dresses Flat Earth and he comes out, he comes out of nowhere and just attacks him and we start fighting. Um, and... So we got great reactions from the crowd. There's people reacting to like me littering. Obviously, there's like, uh, and then when we started fighting and it got really physical, uh, people were like on the hook and screaming things at us and like trying to stop us from fighting. And then I started pouring. Uh, I grabbed this like uh, red canister that like you have gasoline in, and I started pouring that down. Yeah, uh, Andre's throat. It was supposed to be motor oil, but uh, we ended up. Uh, we just had to use this gas canister and that was a bridge too far like people were like oh my god this guy's throwing is like pouring gasoline down his throat uh and i was doing it as like a save the earth guy and um in the original bit too i was supposed to have a daughter that was actually handing out stuff and i was like teaching her all the wrong lessons um but anyway so i'm I'm attacking andre and and then i just hear like whoop whoop it's a very distinct noise. And I just feel my arms being wrenched behind my back. And I look up and it's just a cop with like a, what the fuck are you doing? I'm not in the mood face. No, they and, actually said, yeah. you guys didn't have to do this. Yeah. And it's kind of resigned. <laughs> yeah. He's just, like, you know, you guys didn't have to do this, right? Like, <laughs> It's like the street is littered. There's it's, like, it's insanity. People are like, you're <laughs> are horrified. Or they're angry or they're scared. But you know what I really like, man? Well, you know, I'll tell you Go one ahead, thing quickly. Sam. Sorry, but the, the cop said to me, like, he goes, and it, it, I, you know, it's one of those things that occurs to you afterwards, but he's like, he goes, you know, when I roll, when we roll up on somebody and he's pouring gas down somebody's throat, you're just lucky you didn't get shot. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, there's that part of the equation. Oh, and Eric yeah. runs into that, too, where, like, people get very physical and can get very strange. Like, we, I'll tell you about a mall thing we did, too, that got... Tell me, tell me now. I'd love to um, hear it. I there's an upcoming episode where I, I'm a, uh, I come out hot like I'm a choreography for an elderly flash mob. So I, uh, I got all these. I got I got this elderly flash mob. We choreographed a simple little dance for them, but embedded with them is like this like this older dude who's like this like tough as like tough as nails like cartoon character of an old school Irish dude who was like a stunt man with like a broken nose and he's embedded in. <laughs> He's embedded in the uh, in the uh, flash mob, and I just come out hot, and I'm screaming at them because they don't have their shit together. I'm just like, it's <laughs> it's it's like uh, it, it's like uh, so what's that? Right, like Roy Scheider in in uh, what you call it? Oh, and my brain just. I know exactly what you're that. talking about. The fucking the, like the, what's it, like uh, uh, like what's uh, it? all that jazz? All that all that jazz. That jazz. That it's was... like it's like uh, I come, I'm just like a combination between like. Uh, Roy Scheider and all, all that jazz, and the dude from uh, Wow, the, <laughs> and the dude from Showgirls when he's just like berating people. So I'm just screaming at the uh, at these elderly people for not having their shit together. And I'm just like, how long have we been practicing? This is a trash mob, not a flash yeah. mob. And the old dude's just like, you can't say that to us. And I was like, really? You're out of the you're out of the group now. And we just start shoving each other and. It's bedlam. We just like start throwing each other through glass. <laughs> what? In the, the middle of this mall. Fuck. 
<laughs> and and there's actually like passerby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's people. Oh, it's like in the middle of mall while people are shopping. So it is like battle. There's just like three levels of the mall. People just screaming and and like taking pictures. The interesting thing is like people default now just to like just just to like recording things and like documenting them if Isn't they're even do, document. I don't even know if they're thinking about. Do- they're just doing it because it's like. It's this new reflex we have. So people just tend not to get involved. People were getting involved, but, like, the majority of people were just, like, filming. That was their version of getting involved. Like, I've got to stop this. Isn't that, Record. <laughs> isn't that wild? Because I think when you what that what you're seeing there is, like, a combination defense mechanism, combination, and I don't like using the term. I don't think it's maybe accurate, but it gets thrown around a lot. Late-stage capitalism, which is that... When violence starts happening, instead of wanting yeah. to stop it, you want to figure out a way to commodify it, right. which is to record it and put it on your Instagram. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, oh, shit, violence. That's <laughs> worth a lot of likes. Let me That's grab it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It, and it's pretty eerie, I bet, for, to, to witness that reaction instead of what should just be someone should be like, hey, we're going to break this up. Yeah. And there's, there's like a guy who's like, I was going to start kicking your ass. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, right, and, yeah. and that's a this, which is what I was expecting. I was like, okay, somebody's gonna start kicking my ass. What does the war room look like when you're planning this stuff out? When you guys are writing the show, how do you? What's the process from like the in, the inception of the idea to like getting permission from the network and insurance? How how do you pull oh that my out? God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like, oh lord. Um, I mean, we we basically just like have no. We, you know, it's the, we agree on the fact that like, there's just like the, there's no stupid ideas and anything that you do think is a stupid idea. Great. Say it even louder. Cool. You know, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, just yeah. like, yeah. And we even like kind of part of the process for the stuff we, we all work on is just to, to, to actually embrace like the stupidest stuff. Like we, we like, you know, we, um, we actually favor trying to get people's minds to go um, into like the stupidest direction possible, and and try and make it, try and make it. <laughs> I had to adjust yeah, my mic. My mic. <laughs> I was like at the microphone dentist for a second. Uh, uh, uh. Um, but yeah, anyways, it's it's you know we celebrate stupidity, and again, like I was saying, it's like we also try to put as much smart or make as much of a statement as possible about certain things. Um, but uh, yeah, the process is just like. We know sometimes we're just going to get in shit. It's just kind of like, it's like that, it's it's that moment where like two kids come up with an idea when their parents are away and it's yeah. like, oh my God, we have to do this. We're going to get in so much shit when mom and dad come home, but we have to do this. Like, it's you, just like, Doesn't the network interfere? Aren't they, I mean, aren't there lawyers and insurance companies? Oh yeah, like, yeah absolutely. I mean, that. yeah. And it's like, and we always have to like negotiate. It's like, it's like a bizarre chess game sometimes. And other times you can argue your point um and and then sometimes it's just like it's a hard no and that that becomes part of like the the corporate structure of networks where it's just like we can't do that because nabisco is going to get really pissed right. off because you know we they have a product and you can't do that because the product is on our you know it's just turns into a labyrinth or a labyrinth so sometimes it's just like advertising gets involved you know it's just like you can't do that yeah that's where it you're gets gonna your, fuck. you're gonna fuck <laughs> yourself you're gonna get exactly. su- you're gonna get sued you're gonna yeah. get hurt yeah you're gonna and, and like that's what's so badass about and that's, that's the other thing sorry yeah no, no please go that, ahead i was gonna say that's the other thing too it's just like we like we know we're putting ourselves on the line but we don't we don't want other people to get fucked up you know what i mean we don't want to like have somebody like react in a way that's going to do themselves harm so we kind of negotiate that in our minds as well like while we're making up these these pranks and sometimes they're just completely stupid but um we're putting ourselves we always put ourselves on the line more than than anybody that could be involved and we consider like the possibilities of how people could react and like you know it's always uh you never know but you try to like be as responsible as possible while you're being as responsible as you gotcha can try to be. gotcha yeah and, and and then there's also that like there's this, sort of like when you're running pranks like that there's this i i, I wrote on a, a a prank show um and I, there's always this like weird like ethical consideration not based on violence but also just based on like yeah you know like uh, you know like punked for example 
some of those fucking pranks were just really just ridiculous. Like, like I'm I, I, I threw a brick through your window and you got mad. Yes, you know it's like, well, yeah, no, no shit. Right. Like, what's what's there? To, what's punked here? You like yeah. threw a brick through somebody? Or I don't know if that actually happened. You know what I mean? It's real. Oh yeah, but they've done they did variations on that theme of just like destroying somebody's car, and then the person comes out and goes, what I'm, the I'm mad, fuck? I'm mad, and then I got you, you yeah. got mad. Yeah. But but you guys are doing this like what I love about it is you sort of woven into the prank uh, this commentary yeah. on the modern times on the world on yeah exactly it's just like it is all about just people like record things instead of getting involved and then the, the end of that mall bit by the way it, there's like a, there's like another layered ending to it so it doesn't just end with me fighting this old guy like it's um it plays itself out into this like I start crawling away and it's really it's really quiet in the mall because I'm just crawling away and then I rip my shirt open and then the elderly people run in and they, uh, I guess it doesn't matter. I'll just spoil it, right? Spoiler. <laughs> guys, let's wait 20, 30 seconds. Guys, we're going to, not 30 seconds. Turn it off or skip forward or do something. Spoil. Uh, and I ripped my shirt open. I've just got like a, I've just got like a uh, layer of nipples. Like, oh, they, and they just, wow. they run over and they start suckling from my nipples. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like he's Bravo! turning and turning and people are their heads explode Bravo. Like are, Jesus Christ that's so fucking good man that kind of like what what would you call that like if you weren't filming it uh, would is, would you call that culture jamming have you ever heard that term yeah before? yeah I remember people used to use that term yeah yeah Cul- like just like I it's um and there's a lot like layered into why we do that stuff and the whole suckling thing and just uh, you know I could it's it's I just I feel like you don't need a reason, bud. Uh, but there, there is, but it's just but like you it's don't just need like one. the idea of just suckling. But yeah, it is to me. It's like, and I think to Eric and, and other writers on the show for sure, it's a combination of making these like you know, they, they, maybe they're just like they're maybe they're, they they feel like terribly academic sometimes, or they're like they're they they they're more esoteric, but. They're like these kind of weird little statement pieces, but they're also just like art, you know? It's just like, yeah. it's street art. It's yeah. like... Yeah, but that's the idea, and it? It's like, it seems like... Um, I, I always feel bad with a podcast, with any anything I'm putting out there, and I do it. I mean, I do it, and it's embarrassing, but when I throw something out there that isn't funny, you know what I mean? When I yeah. get pissed at something, or, 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 or even worse, like I feel like, I'm going to talk about man attention. <laughs> You know what I mean? And I'm, and I'm listening to myself doing something. And it's just, it's not, there's nothing in it that's like even remotely what you would call artistic and certainly not funny. It just, but, it, but it, it's like scratching some weird itch inside of me to be like, let me teach you anything. <laughs> yeah. you but know? I mean, like, if you're, like, if you're, act, if you're, sincere, like, it's the sincerity of it and like turning people onto something and a trust people have in you right and there's and and there's a reason people are drawn to you so you make good work of that well you know? sometimes so. but sometimes there's fail the failure to me what, what i'm saying is what, what you're like so like you come up with a thing you want to say like let's say you, you want to say people really do seem to be ignoring the violence of the world by yeah. imagining they have control over it from filming it or yeah. some some something like that, right? Mm-hmm. And sure, you could say that. You could you could tweet that and people are going to be like, "Yeah, I guess so." Or right. You make that the core of a hilarious bizarre piece of art and let them look at it and realize it themselves. Now you've actually accomplished something <laughs> yes. wonderful because, like, it's it, you're demonstrating instead, it's, it's, and and you're like you're giving them something that they, by and large, aren't going to experience again the following week or right. possibly ever again. And they also <clears throat> part of that, uh, the part of that labyrinth and all the trouble we went through to make that 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 uh, hidden camera bit was we knew that people were going to be pissed off. Once the like their their heads were going to kind of explode once the suckling started, they weren't going to know what to make of it. But I saw it demonstrated out loud, and like people were like, "Oh shit, it wasn't a real," <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, he wasn't really about to murder this old guy. Oh fuck! Uh, I'm gonna have to like. I have a feeling like 90 percent of the people just like erased the footage on their phone. I'm like, oh, I didn't get a murder. <laughs> there would be a comment for sure. It's like that wasn't real. <laughs> 
yeah. can't believe I just had to watch a yeah, fake a murder. A fake murder. Oh, my God. Yeah, is, yeah and that is, like, really, really yeah. the thing, isn't it? That's yeah. the thing, man. It's like, God damn it, what's that amazing... Ama- they, they redid it. It's an amazingly violent movie. Fuck. Oh, I just watched it with my wife. It's so fucked up. Anthony Jesselneck named accidentally or intentionally named his tour after it. It's called oh. You know what I'm talking about? It's the two dudes end up going into a into like a house and they end up like basically it's like just like they, they end it's a home invasion movie. And oh. Um, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, it's so good. It was like uh, pr- uh, pr- uh pretty things? No. No. God damn it. Okay. No, not pretty things. Um it's not pretty things. It's it's like that. Though. It's yes. It's, it's uh, why am I not thinking of it either? It's just like two guys and they just go in and they have golf clubs and that's just it. Like, and it was based on a on a Scandinavian film. That's it. I'll, yeah. I'll just like write down the time and <laughs> stick it up and like do like an interjection. Guys, sit this. back while we try to remember this. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. That's fun. That's fun to listen to. Make yourself some cocoa. Uh, We're gonna try now? and remember I mean, the name of this thing. If only we had something oh, that like had all human was... information that we could funny access. games. Funny games. Ah, yeah, God. funny games. <laughs> and so you're watching this movie, and you're, and the brilliance of the movie is, at first you're watching the movie, and you start getting mad at the dudes with the golf clubs who are torturing this family, right? And then one of them looks at the camera, right, and starts talking to you, and you realize, wait a minute, <laughs> I'm the one watching this shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm the voyeur. I'm the one. I'm the one who's getting off on the fucking violence and the brilliance of of that is because sure you could really just say to people, hey guys, here's something. Yeah, well, you like it, like as George Carlin said, I like it when terrible things happen. You like it. Yeah, you pretend you don't like it, and and you get really pious about it. But the reality is, forensic files. How many fucking seasons of Forensic Files are there? <laughs> exactly. How many seasons? By the way, great mustaches on that show. <laughs> I'm addicted. Every single person on that show, whether they're the perp or the cop, they have fucking great mustaches, dude. Dude, dude I've, it's like I, the Mustache Hall of Fame. The, I have actually had the thought flick. You know, like how thoughts will flicker across your the, the, your mind before you can stop them, just like a, a bird flying out of some subterranean <laughs> cavern in, yeah. in your heart, and you're like, "Oh my god, <laughs> that lives That's in be- me." That's beautiful. But this I had this fucking thought fly across watching Forensic Files after I'd seen every episode. I was like, "Man, they need to make more episodes." <laughs> Yeah. Which means more I, people need to get violently right, murdered. Exactly. For for my pleasure. So yeah. I can yeah. Yeah. So I can like make cheese doodles and or like eat cheese doodles and watch it's hotel somebody's room. <laughs> it's hotel room fair. Yeah. That's what it is when you're well, on vacation. I noticed that about watching like I mean like th- like classic law like the classic like law and order um you know uh the, the the classic like sweet spot in Law and Order like kind of like the the middle of of them making that series for like five hundred years but like between year three hundred and year seven hundred they had like it's great it's like mm-hmm. Law and Order SUV SVU yeah is like um it's terrible it's like terrifying it's just like it, it's like an excuse to like hear the word sperm come out of a child's mouth. Like it's just like it's yeah. just horrible. I'm like on prime time, and I mean, acting and and plot aside, it's. I mean, at the core, that's kind of what people are just gravitated to. Like this this gruesome nature of the show, and the, I, I was watching it one day, and I was like, "Is the same thing?" You talk about friends of us. I'm watching it, and, I'm, and and then in my mind, I'm like, I turn into the the worst piece of shit in the world. I'm just like, I wouldn't have put the kid's body there. I would have <laughs> taken it up to. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm like, oh cool! I've murdered a child, and I'm fucking scolding this dude for where he hid the body. It's like, well, I would have taken the bow. I would have like put it, chopped it in the five. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa! Yeah, what an <laughs> idiot, what? right? I can't believe yeah. he did that. Are you yeah. kidding? Like well, that seems like the most obvious yeah, mistake. I would have dealt with that kid's body way better. Than I that. mean, it's a child's body. Like you could invest <laughs> in an good. ice chest that will easily yeah. fit a child's body. You know, it's them. land there is that people wouldn't even look. At. It's like, oh my god! What I, but I mean, that's what people like. <laughs> getting so we're getting so dark, but it's just like. I mean that's that's the reason why people are just like watching any sort of like 
that's the reason why car chases are on the news for like an hour and a half. That's the reason why they're just like people just love waiting to find to find out where they're gonna find the body. Like, well, yeah, yeah. And it's like those kids that were in the cave, right? Like I'm just like, how many people are just like wait, wanting to see how this turns into the darkest thing in the world? When they just all suffocate, like yeah, they, exactly. It's just like, oh, I hope they have cameras down there for that part. Or fuck, man. I mean, obviously, like you, someone is definitely gonna all you. That is the like the that thing right there that could so easily turn into the coolest fucking horror movie ever. Yes. Which is like the fucking kids like right as they're getting rescued there's some shit in the cave yeah. starts fucking with them. But they got out thank God but the 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 well, we can still hope that they have something inside of them from the cave that's going to come out in the hospital. Holy fuck, that's what it is. It starts off as a movie about a cave rescue and turns into these <laughs> yes. little Thai kids with their eyeballs exploding and scorpion things crawling out. Yeah, they're like patient zeros. They're like the Trojan horses. Are you listening, Hollywood? Guys, make this fucking movie, Make man. us make this movie. Yeah, make a, yeah, that's it. And we'll make money off of fame. Ah, you're on Duncan, Tr- Duncan Trussell's pitch. You ready? <laughs> but, man, this is where it gets, to me, where it gets really, really interesting is that, like, as a person is being violently murdered, uh, there is some percentage chance that if the murder is interesting enough or just lands on the radar of forensic files. Yeah. Then that murder is going to be turned into money. That's the thing is that murders are being harvested for cash. Like that's the Well, and you notice how like how now people are just prepped to be on the show to talk about like the murders too. Like I I have a feeling you'd you'd probably have to like really take have an F, like there would be some form of effort Whenever ago to like have somebody sit down and calmly talk about like right. how their friend got murdered and all of like the red flags and like right. with their hair done and right makeup makeup on and like hair, hair and makeup hair and makeup okay Cynthia do you want some powder yeah. before you talk about your daughter being yeah brutally chopped to pieces can you in just the go forest? all right we're just gonna go that through one more time we just need you to say um a little. Okay, yeah. So yeah. let's just talk about your daughter being murdered and yeah. action. And a producer, oh, okay. A producer's watching, and when they start crying, the producer's like, "Yes, <laughs> yes. yes, they're crying." And then I was watching one where somebody it was like John Quijones or somebody, and the 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 they were just like egging each other at odds. It's just like, so that must have been weird. It's like, oh my god, totally weird. It's like you must have been like, what's going on? It's like I was totally like, what's going on? Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> their best friend being murdered I'm like oh lordy it's absurdity it really is taking quite a turn it's fucking crazy but you you this it seems like your show mostly for millennials it seems like it's like it's a comedy (laughs) it's it's a comedy but it does seem to be like as I was researching this uh, it does seem like you're you're making a commentary on sort of the exploitation by corporations of a specific demographic it's like seeing it through the prism of like of like corporate it's like it's generational it's like people always want to know what the kids are doing you know like every generation has that and it's like from the people who have are like out of touch and but they they want to make money off of it they have to market to it they have to do whatever they have to keep the machine running they have to keep so it's like yeah it's like this clueless pandering attempt attempt to be cool um all combined with just like this like ethically and morally unhinged host who's like a narcissist and a crowd that's like bloodthirsty like yeah. the crowd the audience is the audience you know it's just like this bloodthirsty audience it's like when i come out and go like should i chop my head off you know they're like yeah Dad, <laughs> do, do it. it and they have their phones out you know everybody wants to it's, where'd you, you know. come up with that idea to to make the audience bloodthirsty like that where how, what, where when did that pop into your head i just thought it would be i i thought it would be it's a great way to have the audience be active um and kind of just like it cuz it's the whole the the premise of or you know one of the one of the central kind of uh uh points of the show is like how primal everything is right and like how so there the the audience is like just is just like this this crowd of id you know like right. and they you know it's like it's like a bloodthirsty kind of Mori Povich 
audience kind of so it's just like they on cue they're like oh you know and then when something is about to go down they're like ah yeah blood 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 yeah and then when they you know they worship me in a weird way but they also get they they worship me but they also they deify me but they also get confused by me right right so that aspect of it to me is just like the cultishness of things so it's like we've created our own little hermit kingdom yeah right like it's like it's just like it's anytime you watch anything about a cult you know that there's definitely those days where probably a larger percentage than not is scratching their head going what what was what was she talking about today and what she was don't worry there's a reason for what happened today you know and i feel like that's also a response and like a mirror to what's going on in the world and our politics i just think people are like don't worry there's a reason he's doing that and it's just like yeah there's not actually (laughs) yeah isn't that crazy it's the illusion it's it's a lot of fun it's so fun man but it's terrifying it's terrifying because what we've done what we managed to do here is create this kind of illusion that there are certain infallible people on planet earth yeah we need to do you think we need to i think we need to feel that way i think it's like ego i think it's just like I need to feel that way because that I've decided that person is here to represent me. Therefore, when they do something, it's me doing it, and I would do the best things in the world. Or you, whatever. You know, it's just like I would uh, – because I've decided to uh, put, you know, my – like to basically endorse this behavior or this person – what they do is reflective of my decision. Right, Therefore, right. I cannot allow there to be any cracks in the mirror. It's right. just like, right. this is all fun. This is going to be fun. And I think it's like very ego-driven. I think right. I think it's – and I think that everything that we're doing now and the way – exactly what we're talking about, like just people like documenting themselves <laughs> and being their own brands and all the hellish things that we even have to do. Um, it's just like I think when when that takes over – that's that's what happens. It's just be, everybody becomes like monolithically uh, narcissistic. I don't know. That's a beautiful way to put it, and it's so sad when it happens. If you like, I just rewatched Grizzly Man. Have you seen that in a while? Mm-hmm. Grizzly Man. Yeah. With, yeah. And um, you know, this is this dude who's like on on one level it seems to be really really sweet, attuned to nature. Foxes follow him around. He's obviously got some like serious fucking issues he's working through but um his his like main like mo is i'm here to protect these bears yeah but if he'd never gone out there then like he ended up like two bears ended up getting killed because of him like bears ended up getting killed because of him and like in in his intended effect it it had the opposite effect because the reality is you're watching it is like he really believes this shit it's not like he's evil but the reality of it is by going into this place and turning himself into a hero, he has actually become the thing that he was apparently fighting against, the classic problem. Yeah. But on top of that, he there's, you know, that wonderful part where Werner Herzog listens to the footage of him being eaten by a bear because he left the lens cap on. Mm-hmm. But the, 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 no one mentions once in, in the scene that as a bear was coming into his tent, in his tent, to attack him and his girlfriend, he took a moment to turn his fucking camera on. <laughs> right. You know, like, you're you're about to get eaten. Yeah. And you're like, wait, oh shit, I gotta get this on tape. <laughs> and then he's in, so he's like recording himself being devoured by a wild animal. Like, maybe in that millisecond yeah. of trying to decide what to do, the order of priorities should be get away from the bear right oh yeah absolutely but his order of priorities was film being eaten by the fucking bear and so yeah Yeah. so what you're talking about is just this very thing which is that it's like man we all want to be fucking heroes of course and it's a beautiful desire it's it's good to, to save people and to save the world yeah but it seems like the order of priorities is that, but before we become the heroes, let's get the fucking cameras rolling and then do the heroic act. Yeah. You know? And then it's also like, let's make sure, yeah, let's make sure that when we're doing the heroic act, it catches my good side 
Like it still comes back to her. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, dude, dude, that's right. Central to it. Dude, fuck it's my like... bald spot really showed it up when I was saving that kid. Is there yeah. any guys? Is there any way another angle of me saving that kid? There's got to be a better angle than that, man. Shit, I'm getting fucking yeah, fat, okay. man. Yeah, can we just concentrate on the on the me not you know, nobody seeing my balls? <laughs> yeah, like the kid becomes secondary after a while. I'm Isn't that like, wild, dude? <laughs> Isn't that wild? I just went to. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I know, man. It's really. It, I mean, listen. I every one of us is guilty of this in some way or another. Yeah, I think this is. I think this is like. I think this is just a brand new mirror that's come off of the assembly line wow. that's showing us in like it's just a different reflective nature. I think this stuff is always in us. I just think this is like a new mirror off the assembly line that has a different reflective quality, and we're like, oh shit! From uh, this angle, we're also pretty terrible. <laughs> <It's> yeah. Like, <laughs> Right. Yeah. And you that know? I think that that sort of like come up and with, with in general the 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 that that we all need to like be I think it starts with like if we're being hard on on like people in the media or we're being hard on or, or whoever it is for being infallible or not being infallible then guaranteed that's got to be a reflection of us being hard on ourselves, right? Yeah. The, the idea is like we're fallible human greedy egocentric self-interested because we are fucking descended from monkeys <laughs> yeah well and, and yeah i think it's i think it's just like people it's just like people will find sometimes people will just find their their reason to be angry at other people and that's manifested because their dad was just a drunk who screamed at them all the time. That's right. And it's just like, and it's just like, really, do your fucking daddy issues have to like affect people's lives in such a terrible way? Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, it's, you're ang- you're angry at your dad by vilifying this group of people or whatever. Yeah, and there's so many ding dongs out there like that. And it's just like, why are you doing this? Oh, because there's a, there's like a for- there's this dark little hole inside of you that cannot be filled well that's where and the problem is we're, we're t- and that's me <laughs> that person is me <laughs> me too wait no it's fucking me motherfucker it's just me not you you're fine I'm a fucker and this is the and this is what it, this is exactly it man and, and, and the, the problem with what you just said for me and I think for a lot of people is that the moment when you summon the asshole that uh-huh. you hate most into your mind yeah, and zoom backwards in time, and inevitably you're gonna find some sweet kid who's getting the shit kicked out of them by something. Yeah, you know, and it's yeah, and it's a lot of the time, a yeah. lot of the time, maybe yeah. not all the time. Yeah, but a lot of the time. And yeah. the moment you get you realize that, now it's like motherfucker, I can't hate you at the level I'd like to because I've humanized you. Yeah, it's like it's. I don't know if it's absolutely analogous to this, but it's like. When some, I, I guess it's what I'm trying to say is just, it's just that it is just that simple sometimes. Like I remember, you know, you you talk to you talk to like a cop who's like a detective or something, and it's just like, well, so you guys like, what ha-? like you know, you think of things in terms. TV becomes our documentary series, right? Like that's the way we we start approaching life. Like t- like these TV shows, like at, like SVU is a yeah. documentary. So it's like oh, you say, I guess you get you get some like. Somebody calls in with a tip or something, or like you notice that the guy's got some blood on his shirt, and you just kind of track him down, follow him around, and, and the cops are just like, "No, dude. Usually, what it is is somebody got murdered. You ask their girlfriend or their boyfriend or whoever. Hey, was somebody mad at them? Yeah, this guy at his job said he hated him. Go to the go to the job. The guy's there. Did you kill him? Yes." <laughs> <laughs> Case closed. Like, he said it's usually that. It's like, not it's usually, mysterious. It's not mysterious. It's Human just, nature is not some no, kind of mystical. Just, no, it's not like not, kaleidoscope. And that's that that that's exactly what I think. That's what we need to think about ourselves is that we are we are that capable of engineering this like dynamic. I, like outcome to things where in fact it's just like our mo- like the way we achieve things sometimes is just like we're just like 
we're sniffing our fingers after scratching our groin, you know? It's yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's the process involved. It's wow. just like, it's just this. It's like, so we, but we need to feel like through leaders or whoever the hell that we're like, we're like, we're, yeah, this is, that's right. That's, this is, this is how good I am too, or whatever the hell. And it's just like, yeah. It's like kind of like well, you, we're, we're looking for a tuning fork. We're all looking yeah. for a fucking tuning fork, <laughs> yeah. man. That's what we want really bad, and we need one. And, and, and if we had a great tuning fork, which is what a really great leader could be, I mean, on the grand scheme of scale, it seems a little insane or a lot insane to imagine that one fucking dude yeah. can tune an entire country of millions of people that's fucking yeah. stupid yeah it's it's kind of amazing that we i mean it's i guess it keeps us from inevitably sinking into that place that we all know that we can easily achieve which is just like absolute chaos absolute mm. like left to our own volition just a mess right well, so it's just like we need this like central the central character right you know, to like to be our mouthpiece or whatever the hell the person's supposed to be, but it's just like, yeah, the descent into mad. It's it it is so insane. But then you look at the alternative, and I just think it'd just be like an absolute descent into madness. Talk like, about, <laughs> but we're we're doing that. I think. Let's talk fun. about that. I want you to explain that to me because that is so. Like the the one of the, I think. Yeah. If I wanted to control a huge group of people, yeah, one of the first things I'd want to get into their heads. Is that if they were not controlled, they would descend into madness. <laughs> yeah. You know? right. yeah. That's like a really useful yeah. thing to tell people is like, yeah. hey, without me, you guys are going to go absolutely fucking nuts. You're going to start stabbing each other. Trust me. Trust me. You need the dude with I'm... the suit and the nuclear arsenal or this fucking humanity thing. Oh, man, you're just going to go nuts. Yeah. We need this. Th- yeah. I'm like the best brand of glue. That you could possibly hold it all, I'm holding together. it all together, baby. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and, and and like you, so it's just like I think it's just like we revert. Like you watch movies about, pardon me, like a like I love movies that, about the president of the United States when they're like always making decisions. Like the president's like, no, <laughs> we're not going to do that. We're going to do this, and it's like, Mr. President, the president said we're going to do, that. and they they make these like insane decisions, yeah. or like that are for the betterment of the world. Like they, they, you know, they're the hero figure, but they'll just like make these amazing uh, uh, decisions immediately. And I think that's what people still think that like presidents and world leaders are like. Like they're in an office and they're like, no, we're not doing it that way anymore. We're doing it this way yeah. because it's the right thing to do. Right, and then suddenly so nobody objects to it. Everybody goes like. Supreme leader. Like, it's very supreme leader. Very. Yeah, very. And <laughs> very, like just very. definitely not how it happens. And we, no, and no, we no. have no idea what fucking goes on up there. But, you know, I, I, I think it's like a, a really important thing to think about, and which is, is it the human tendency to descend into madness if they're not being lied to by a charismatic leader. Because if that's the case, I think it's a pretty dire prognosis for our species. You know, and, and a lot of people, anarchists in particular, say, you know, actually, that is a intentional bit of conditioning mm-hmm. that has been going on for a very long time. And usually they'll cite things such as disasters. Like, whenever a disaster happens... And, 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 like, there are no, like, cops, and there are no presidents, and there temporarily isn't a government. There's just rubble everywhere. Yeah. You'll notice that it doesn't descend into madness. Rather, it does, it, it actually seems to ascend into some kind of, like, very temporary form of socialism, which is that people right. come out of their houses and start digging people out of rubble or bring people into their houses or give people water or go out in boats and take people out of their houses. And then you realize, like, wait, hold on a fucking second here. Maybe that's our tendency. It's just that tendency right. is being subverted by uh, p- putting one dude in place, in a, in a place where it should be, like, I don't know, smaller groups of like tri- like tribes or communities. That- I think I think like I th- yeah, I mean I th- I think that's like I mean that's a hopeful way of looking at it. I think that maybe like, it's naive, I don't know. I, no, I don't, that's the thing. I don't know either. I just like and it is I don't think there's anything to be I don't think there's any reason to fear that possibility. I just wonder if it's like where I, I wonder if it's that's where we're at. It's like we just need like 
We need something to hammer us over the head so hard, like a, like a a um, a disaster that just does not have any favorites. So we realize that we're all um, at the mercy of this event, uh, and it takes something that powerful and that like um, uncondition unconditionally. Uh, essentially, like it, 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 like it just doesn't give a fuck who you are. It's just gonna like it's gonna affect you in a negative way. It takes it takes that amount of of uh, uh, sorry. Let, let me start again. It, it, it takes something that like intense to make us feel empathetic hmm. because now the sh- now the shoe is collectively on all of our other feet. Like now we're all those people. Right. <laughs> right. Like we're all of those people. We're all, you know, pretty much fucked all at once. Right. So we we don't have time to like have to to like place some sort of bullshit order of like who is superior and who is like more uh uh deserving of something or whatever whatever it is that we like to do when we have our spare time by the way we, we go to grocery stores and we eat and we sit in chairs all day so now we've just become like this everybody's like in their own version of Rome everybody's just sitting with their to- in their togas going like those people are stupid yeah. those people shouldn't come to the country yeah. those people you know what yeah. I mean? like we're all our own little Neros so I, sometimes I, yeah it takes, like, it takes like an earthquake or a natural disaster or a fucking like tornado to rip an entire community to pieces so that people are just like actually just brought down to the same level and then they're yeah. just like I have no choice but to like actually look at this person who I was judging last week and help them well, the exact, out of this rubble exactly <laughs> I mean this is one of the this is this is sorry good. that was a super long winded beautiful, beautifully said though man it's just like the, the thing is is like clearly clearly we're out of tune and it's like certainly one of the like great tuning forks is catastrophe if there ever was like a wonderful tuning fork to what a human being is it's a fucking disaster and then you'll see like man people fucking die for people they don't know they jump into lakes and pull yeah. kids out for no and they don't even think about it they just instinctually naturally fucking do it and like it sucks man that's a shitty fucking tuning fork there's all kinds of tuning for it's called hit and bottom Right, hitting bottom. That's what alcoholics and drug addicts Mm -hmm. they have to like get to the point where they're like they've got they're like getting fucking fisted by some dude under a bridge while like (laughs) sucking a horse's dick just to get like seventy five cents to buy like a little fucking crystal fucking. (laughs) Well, well, that just turned into a postcard. That's my hitting bottom story. (laughs) Literally, (laughs) that's when I knew I had to stop playing World of Warcraft. The, the worst postcard in the world. <laughs> Come visit Hitting Bud of Tennessee. But you, you know, man, when that so like for 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 a lot like most like to bring it. The problem is like also we all I tend to project onto the entire planet or under the huge swaths of populations. I've never fucking met a personality and a motivation and an intention, and, and, and the whole time I'm just sort of like ignoring myself. Right. But all I I know that in general. When I slam into the wall of my own identity, not just like in my own mind, but when like something happens where I'm like, whoa, wow, I fucked up. That yeah. was a big mistake. I shouldn't have done that. Holy shit. I, I hurt somebody's, I, you know, I, I fucked up. Then that's when like there, it, I, I evolve. Like, mm-hmm. dude, once I, I, I snuck out of a, <clears throat> I was working at a summer camp as a camp counselor and I snuck out cause my friends were having like a keg party up in the mountains yeah. and I took a, I, like I, I went with like two counselors in training. I'm in my fucking like car driving down the fucking, it's raining. I'm in North Carolina driving around these crazy roads. I guess my idea was I'll just go get fucking hammered at this kegger. I think it was like an hour and a half away from the camp, drive back to camp by the morning and then like take care of kids. <laughs> right. <laughs> You know, like it's, it's, you can, I can't it's think of terrible. anything more fucking irresponsible <laughs> yeah. and horrible and stupid. Yeah. And like, I'm driving down this fucking road and like right in front of me, man, like, cause it was foggy and, and it's like within a, like 
the fog clears just enough time for me to see one of those big yellow sharp turn signs, which I'm slamming yeah. into. I hit it. The car fucking flips. <laughs> Breaking glass. The car's, I'm upside down oh in the car. The radio is playing, I think it's Cream. In the white room with black curtains by the station. Right? In the back seat of the car are two, I think one of them 17, one of them's maybe 18. I don't, I don't know their age. But in the moment, in that moment, I'm looking forward. There's a moment where I don't know when I turn around what the fuck I'm going to see. Yeah. And and, 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 and and those kids could have broken their necks. They could have gotten, you know, a million things because of my selfishness could have happened to those fucking kids. Um, but I turned around. The kids were fucking okay. Uh, thank God. Um, and, 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 and where it was... Re- the, <laughs> High-fiving. Let's do it again! <laughs> we, well, it just, it's just more of like in that quiet, in that silence yeah. uh, after glass breaks and and the radio's playing and the car's upside down you're living in truth man and that's oh, a great absolutely. fucking tuning fork it's a great tuning fork and it's a, and it's 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 such a great way to put it like that that tuning fork that that note that you hit at that moment you have to remember it as long as you can like you have to like use that moment as terrifying as it was instead of I mean, of course, you don't want to wake up every morning and go like, mm, "Oh yeah, I did that." But, but that that feeling, that that moment, that realization um, of how just um, like absolutely corruptible we can be yeah. in our decisions, yeah. Um, and knowing that, you know, like I, I think that's like that's what comedy is too like you have to know that you're a scumbag like you have to know that you're not perfect you have to know that you don't have all the answers you have to know that like you'd be a shitty cult leader you have to know these things about yourself yeah and like be able to go like no i i get it i suck too like i suck i do i i suck too too but i i because i know that i try not to suck Right, so that's it's it. like just get it out there is the main thing. Yeah, man. like that's the I think yeah. Where, and that moment that you're describing is just like so important to like harness, you know. Well, see, in that moment, um, a cult leader would have turned around and looked at the living people in the back seat and said, "See, God saved us. Yeah, see we what surely I, should have died." See what I just showed you? Yeah, I showed you the truth. <laughs> Do you see what I've taught you? Yeah. That's like and, and, and that 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 is the problem is because our fucking you didn't leaders it. they're sla- they're slamming their fucking they're driving co- they're we're in the back seat of a fucking bus being driven by very fallible, very fallible, greedy people. And they're crashing the bus. And when they crash the bus, instead of turning around and being like, guys, I'm not that great at driving this fucking bus. They're saying, I'm the best bus driver that ever fucking yeah. lived. Yeah. And people are hearing that and being like, I guess they're good at driving the fucking bus. They've got a plan. This is the problem. It's like we've. Oh, and, and yeah. And they'll, yes. They'll, and they'll, and, and they'll, if, and another, another version of that will be them going like, if, if you have the nerve to like go like, what the fuck did, what just happened? I can't believe this. It's just you know their version of the, their version of reality. To be like, well, nobody put a gun to your head, motherfucker. You got into the car with me. Yeah, you, like, got, this is like... you decided to go to the party. <laughs> yeah, you should have like... known I was going to wreck. You should have known car. somehow. Look at me. Do I look like I can fucking drive? <laughs> Do I look like a safe person to you? This is your fault, dumbass. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, and where it gets really depressingly sad is that the mentality of a victim. Uh, I've just been listening to this fucking great book called Hallelujah Anyway by Annie Lamont. God damn, it's good. And it is this this like concise uh-huh. breakdown of what it's like to grow up in a dysfunctional, toxic family for a kid. And what it's wow. like is you've got a fucking alcoholic parent or, or whatever. Uh, you got a crazy parent, right? Yeah. And it's easier for a kid with a crazy parent to believe they're 
the ones causing the problems because then they can imagine that they're still in control Mm -hmm. than it is to like recognize that the fucking crazy parent is crazy because they're the ones who've been they're the ones they're the ones who taught you how to talk you know they're the ones who taught you like what the who told you the name of the thing in the sky is the sun and if you suddenly realize like wait a minute there's a big distortion in that person's reality field, yeah. then that's very unnerving because it's like, wait, if their reality is distorted to the level where they think it makes sense to go withdraw like, you know, $10,000 from the bank account and spend it in Vegas and then come back drunk and punch the fuck out of my aunt in front of my brother or whatever it may be, then what else if they put in me that's distorted in my reality yeah. field must be distorted, right? So we're having this like ex- experience where a victim would much rather think they're like a, a person will would rather think they're to blame than to realize like, wait a minute, Wait a minute! It isn't my fault. Mm-hmm. It's the this abu- the abuser, the fucking oppressor, the whatever, and they know that people yeah. know that shit. That's where it gets really scary because for the goddamn uh, oppressor or whoever who's doing the fucking vile, shitty thing, it's. I mean, look, I don't know. Have, let me ask you. And I'm sorry if it's like too personal a question, but have you ever gotten drunk and done something stupid that you regretted the next day? Yeah, I mean it's it's the same thing as as, as like doing something stupid where you're just like uh, you get behind the wheel of a car or you. But personally, yeah. have you ever like gotten hammered and then like done some stupid thing where like the next day you wake up? Are you a drinker? Yeah, I used to like drink more than I should have <laughs> for sure, and I've I and I've just been like, no, that's not a great road to go down. It's an easy road to go down because it's. It's fun, and it's and it's everybody around you enables it because they're doing it too. But uh, yeah, I mean, like countless times, I've woken up going like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, you know, like uh, I remember once I like, I mean, this is I did this to myself, but like I walked out of, I was I was hammered, and I I was at a barn party, and I walked, I was climbing up this like through this barn with a friend. And um, we got into a fight with some dude because we were hammered. Like, got into a fist fight. And then I was, like, walking out of the barn, um, t- like, to go outside. Like, I was all pissed off and, like, what the fuck? And I was on the second, like, the second uh-huh. level of the barn. Yeah. Thinking I was on the ground level. And I walked out and I, I fell, like, an entire Holy story. Holy shit. Onto a pile of hay, Fuck. which is like just, and then I Thank I got God. up and I staggered away from it, and the next day the guy whose farm it was was just like, uh, the only reason that hay is there is because my tractor broke down. Like the guy, the kid's dad, he's like, so we the tractor broke down that day, and like I had to un, I had to like take the bales off so I could get the Whoa. and unhitch the thing and da 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 and take the tractor away, and I was just like, cool. I got into like a stupid fist fight with some dude. Like, just, like, was punching some guy. Yeah. And then walked out all pissed off and, uh, what, like, just, like, basically, like, killed myself. You yeah. Know? So it's a combination of, like, did something stupid and then did something even stupider to myself, potentially. Right. And, yeah, and, it was and, just like... And it happened because you were fucking hammered. Yeah. Right? And yeah. you were... So I'm just being a dummy. You're right. You, you got drunk and you were being a dummy and that's why it happened. And for some reason, some people, when that the exact thing happens to them... They think to themselves, that motherfucker in the, in the fucking that I got in a fight with, it's his fucking fault. Yeah. That son of a bitch. Yeah. Because yeah. It's, it's so much easier for like a chronic alcoholic to imagine that there's a reason mm-hmm. that they're acting crazy. But it's way, it's really a lot more like if you had to choose between being like full blown insane or doing shit for a reason, you're going to pick doing shit for a reason, right? Yeah. 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 So these fucking shitty parents, man, what's happening is when they fucking smack their kids around when they're super fucking hammered and the kids like, I spilled the milk I didn't spill the milk. They're like, yeah. You shouldn't have spilled the fucking milk because you made daddy smack you. Yeah. And because it's it's harder for them to be like, wait, man, I'm hitting kids. I'm a fuck. I'm fucked. It's up. the whole like that. Look what you made me do to you. 
Yeah. It's that whole kind of like psychology of just like, see what you made me do now? Yeah, dude. And like, like that movie Chopper, that Australian movie about the, the guy, the, the, the biker from Australia that's just like a national hero. But in the movie, there's like a brutal scene like that where he's like beating his wife, his girlfriend, and like punches her mother. And then the first thing that comes up of his mouth is like, See what you made me do to you? Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like such a chilling moment. You're just like, oh my it's God. Fucking chilling. And then when you, then when you like, you know, one of the things Carl Jung says that's really creepy is the sh- the collective shadow of a society gets projected into their government. And when you realize that every single fucking war the United States has been involved in follows a very similar pattern, which is that the United States has been at war for 93% of its history, man. And every time we go to fucking war, for we're always like, see what you did? Yeah, see yeah, what you yeah, did yeah, to yeah, us? Yeah. See what you made us do? You made us fucking launch fucking missiles against you and drop bombs on you and kill all your all these fucking civilians. Don't just see what you did? Yeah. And the, con- the people in the country are like, dude, I sell fucking mats. <laughs> I'm a mat. <laughs> salesman yeah i'm a mat salesman and i watch my fucking kid get exploded by a fucking bomb dropped out of a goddamn remote controlled fucking spaceship thing i didn't do shit man and that's that i think is like the in the same way that a fucking drunk has to come to jesus so to speak Mm -hmm. and be like i've got a fucking problem i'm fucking hooked on booze yeah the united states can't seem to realize uh i think maybe i've got a little bit of a war addiction going on here yeah and it's just like if you and you know it's it's like it's the it's the migrant crisis it's just like those same people who are just like i like last year i was just like hanging out with my family now i'm like trying to get a get a I'm, just, I'm trying to get the fuck out of this place that's been reduced to rubble like literally been re- reduced to rubble there's nothing there's no what like when people can't when a, when when your electricity goes off in North America in like a major city and you have like a fairly decent lifestyle yeah your electricity goes off or your water doesn't work yeah. how fast do we fucking go to our fucking phones and go call up whoever and go like my fucking water's been out for three hours yeah pissed <laughs> It's like we can't take a shower before work. The world's like the world has ended. If yeah. the electricity's out for like two days, it's yeah. like what the fuck? It's unsustainable in our minds. Yes, like, we lose our shit. Someone's got to pay for this. This is insane. And you like when it becomes protracted, and it's like six months of that shit, a year of that shit. You're shitting in rubble, literally shitting in rubble. You're yeah. drinking fucking disgusting water. I think I want to get out of here. What you do is to because suddenly there's like it's just like what you're leaving you're leaving your place why are you coming over here for it's just like well I'm a human being and I don't really see myself as lesser than you so I'm just trying to I'm trying to ask you if I can crash at your house for a while yeah start a new life yeah because you kind of helped burn my fucking house down yeah uh you have to because you don't want to deal with it it's like the alcoholics way or whatever like just perfectly what you're saying is just like it's their fault. Well, you know what? You know what the, you know what's going on. Some of the people, uh, part some of the people among you are uh, don't have good feelings toward me, so none of you can come in. That's, that's right. Just, that's one like, of you might be a terrorist. It's like, uh, cool, really. You know, one of you might be angry because yeah. we've been dropping bombs on your fucking yeah. country, which angry. is why you're coming. One of you might be angry or crazy because we don't have any angry or crazy people here. Yeah, dude. And so now, when you when you slam into that wall. You know, because yeah. you're, de- it's really frustrating because it's like, fuck, man, like, I, honest to Christ, like, I think if you could, and if I could, like, I, 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 we would like try to fix the problem. But, but honest to God, man, imagine right now if like all of a sudden the walls talk about like a great prank show, two fucking assholes yapping about the immigration <laughs> crisis, right? Get, get like put into a universe. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put two assholes in a warring universe and like and, 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 get, and get them talking about how we got to do something about immigration. Yeah. And then the walls drop. Some kind of reptilian being in a, in a robe comes out, gives us the crystal of power, and is like, "There you go. Yeah, fix now, it. Fix it. Like what? <laughs> what are you gonna? What the fuck are you gonna Wait, do? Wait, I'm in my toga. I'm just like." <laughs> 
<laughs> Wait a minute. I'm what? just I'm here to judge people. I don't know how to actualize anything. Dude, I want to play music on my modular synths. I don't want to solve the fucking immigration yeah. crisis. I gotta check right? my IG hits, dude. Are yeah. you kidding me? Yeah, and, yeah, and right there, man. That's where we fucking slam into the goddamn fucking wall. Right fucking there. Mm-hmm. And it's like, what the fuck do we do? I mean, we, really, what the? There's the. We got a certain amount of stuff. And most of the stuff is in the hands of a very small amount of fucking people. And those people, they, they don't want to give it away. And taking it from them seems pretty fucking unethical. So if the, if the concept is that, like, they've earned it or that stealing is bad or that... And now we've got people who really legitimately want to destroy the United States. But then mixed among them are people who have children who desperately need a fucking bowl of soup and a place to sleep and then in 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 the fucking people who are pissed at us because we've been dropping bombs at them know that there are people over here who want to give kids bowls of soup so they know like shit man we can use that to get shit in there to get revenge because these motherfuckers blew up my grandmother when i was trying to sell mats and now it's like this super complex, oh, crazy yeah. fucking problem. And what's the answer? Take out your phone and fucking film it and go to bed. Take yeah. some sleeping pills and forget it, I guess. Right? I think it's like, I think we just become like retreating warriors. Like we just retreat. We like everything around us now allows us to like act like we're doing something, but we actually get to retreat. Right. So it's just kind of like, mm. I'm showing up for war. Kind of. Because it's wrong. <laughs> this is like, I'm a warrior. Not really, though, because I'm just like, I get to retreat into my phone. I'm not going to. What do we do? I don't want to get my hands dirty. How do we not retreat? Like, there's got to be, like, I, I I love thinking about, like, not, like, bullshit. I, th- I mean, I think, I think, like, part of, I agree. Yeah, it's so frustrating because I think that it's, I villainizing people for showing up en masse to, like, to, to, um, to say this is wrong or to 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 vocalize their their displeasure with what the government's doing that's becoming villainized you know so like any form of like direct action is becoming villainized and that's the dangerous thing like don't fall into that trap like don't think that and sometimes it's people you don't agree with but like I, I, it's better for people to show up and say something than be scolded into retreat and be the lesson that's learned universally is is like don't show up don't say anything right right we're gonna label you a this or that if you do and the building blocks have started for that like people are you know people the fact that people the fact that we call each other names because people show up to 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 be angry about something is pretty disgusting you know it's just like uh and it's being fostered and it's being it's being regionalized like shitty sports teams so right. now politics is just like it's the cougars versus the you know the right. the, the mountain the, whatever the hell my, my the shitty sports my, my, my shitty <laughs> Me too. my <laughs> shitty sports teams the cougars versus the archons the, the, <laughs> The, the archons of France. The marsupials versus the I don't know, mammals. Anyways. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know what I mean? Like, so it's just like, holy shit, this isn't sports, dude. It's like you can't just. That's the thing. That's the thing about like just even like political jerseys. I, they don't fit well on me. No, Political man. jerseys just do not fit well. I cannot put on a single team's jersey and go like, ah, perfect in all ways. Dude. Never taking this off. Not even going to take it off to wash it. Just going to wear, wear it forever. It for, yeah, I'm going to be this fucking thing forever. And that's the other problem is like when you do take a strong stance on any issue, you, you people will like be like, but you sent that back then, right? And, yeah. and, 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 and it's like, and the, and the problem is, is like, well, fuck. You know, you're right. I did say that. And I was fucking wrong. I was wrong. And dude, I've, I've, the thing you're talking about is like, sometimes, man, I'll look at some, I'll look at people's like tweets and they're pissed off about this or that. And they've tweeted like a, a big fat fucking tweet of like rage. And, and I'll be like, God damn it. Like, whatever. Like, you don't mean that. Or I don't know. And, and I've, I've caught myself doing that. And it's so hypocritical. Because I, I will tell you a tweet that I'm deeply embarrassed and ashamed of. And I tweeted a long time ago. And I look back at that tweet. And I, and, and I really was like, I was really fucking upset, man. And, and it was, I think, it was during one of our mini wars. No, it was like Israel was attacking Palestine. And I tweeted, it's so fucking sanctimonious, dude. 
I tweeted, I'm against anyone. It's something like, I'm against anyone who kills kids. Ugh. Just nauseatingly, like, obvious and, and nauseatingly pious and just not like, yeah, really? Wow, you're unique, huh? Holy shit. That's a, that's a fucking unique position, Duncan. <coughs> Hold on. Let me get this straight. <laughs> You don't right. like it when people kill kids. I I, I want to like really like talk to you about that. Are you sure you want to go on the record saying fire is hot? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, <laughs> exactly. But I fucking. Tweet. But yeah, I get it though. I, I get it. Though. I was upset. I didn't want the fucking kids to get killed in that moment. But also on top of that, and this is the this is to me where it's like I I, I shouldn't be shaming myself because I think ultimately. If you are doing anything that is even like 10% towards bringing, to reducing suffering on planet Earth, then that is better than nothing. Yeah. Even if 90 fucking percent of the time after you do the thing, you're going back to look at how many retweets you got. Yeah. How many faves you got. How many whatever. It's still good. I just think that like the, that we all have got to realize this is a brand new technology and if we can all tune ourselves in a way that we can start using it so that when we like do come out and say something, it's more effective at reducing suffering mm-hmm. than increasing panic and fear. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's like... It, uh, it's like... Um, yeah, it's... Uh, we, 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 like, we teach ourselves lessons about, like, we got to, you know... Again, if it's like immediately, if it's self gratifying, <laughs> we're so horrible. If it's like self gratifying and it has something to do with us, it's like people will teach themselves that a little bit helps if it comes to going to the gym to get that perfect six pack ad. Yeah, right. So right. it's just like, just do it, just chip away at it, dude. Just do it. You you can get there. You can get to that six pack ad, and people are like, you know what? That's a great way to look at it. And but yeah. they cannot use that same. They can't use that same logic that same critical thinking and apply it to other things. Just chip, chip, like help give the world some fucking six pack abs. Yeah. Like just chip away at things. Yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah. you know, I mean, everybody has their own version of six pack abs, I guess, but fuck it. Just chip away at it. I mean, I honestly think that, I honestly think that like people who want to do heinous things that actually don't have the betterment of, society or or you know just like the world I, I, those it goes back to those are the moments that i think become exactly what we were talking about in terms of like a natural disaster happening and people just coming together and going like no that's that that's we got we we're better than this yeah and we have to bank on that in terms of human nature because you can't teach that you can't right. you can't enforce it you can't in i mean you can instill it through like trying to be have your better angels come forward and things like that but i mean like ultimately you can't just like staple that on somebody's chest and it's just like and now you're right. you know gonna do the right thing it's just right. like i think that i think that um yeah everybody's even the people with darker points of view uh after a while when you see that that's one of the alternatives people are just going to be like that just does not that's not going to work dude and I also see that working against me one day like you know if there's ever a good time to be selfish it's when you <laughs> when you put yourself in other people's shoes and go like I don't want that to happen to me <laughs> you know like if you're going to be selfish about something use it that way like that is that's not, brilliant not what I want for myself I wouldn't want that ever <laughs> Really, yeah. use your like, selfishness. Yeah, you use, can it, use t- it as a tool. <laughs> yeah, use it as a tool. Whoa, you're like it's like some kind of new selfishness <laughs> judo. Like you, you can like use it. Fuck, dude, there's yeah. the next book. It's yeah. like using your selfishness <laughs> to bring world peace. Yeah, <sighs> give the world some six pack abs through selfishness. Fuck it, just get there, Mister Beckles. Where can people find you online? <laughs> um, uh, well, uh, yeah, this is what I'm actually here for. Fuck the world. Uh, I'm at TV Carnage. Uh, those are my uh, those are my my handles uh, on the internet, uh, on the on the Twitter, and on the uh, Instagram. Where can we watch TV your Carnage. show? It is on Adult Swim on Sunday nights. 
uh, at midnight. Um, and uh, it's something that I'm I'm very uh, happy and proud that we got to make. It's uh, I think it's I think it's a important piece. It's fucking awesome, man! It's awesome. Good job. Thank it's you, hilarious. Thank you. It's it's yeah. it's artistic. I want to thank everybody who wrote on the show, and of course Eric and like it's it's great. There's like there's I'm I'm I couldn't be happier, and it's and and I'll. It, it, through through its absurdity and its insanity and its and whatever points it's trying to make it also it also gives me hope that that can be created and put out there you know yeah 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 it's amazing yeah it's incredible to, to watch tv these days and particularly shows like yours and just be like whoa they are they're they're like well, it's Adult Swim, so they're yeah. hyper advanced, <laughs> it helps, but still, but yeah. it's like holy fucking shit, man! They're letting this stuff out. Yeah, it's a great sign. Yeah, it is. It is a good sign. It's just like it is. We're like a lot of the shows on Adult Swim, uh, you know, particularly they they really are. I think kind of marching up the hill uh, ahead of a, a lot of there's a lot of people who want to do the same sort of thing and. and and other networks won't enable them to do it, so I'm I'm happy. Yeah, man, I'm glad yeah. that you're on there. Yeah. And thanks so much, man. Just like Thank it you. sounds cheesy, but thanks for making us laugh. For so fucking <laughs> I hope long, so. Man. We we really got uh, we got in there. I don't mean in the podcast. I <laughs> oh mean, yeah, I mean in, in the, the world. In yeah, the fucking art you're putting out yeah. in the world. Thank it's you. It's beautiful. I really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, very you much. so much, man. Thank you. Hare Krishna. That was Derek Beckles. Everybody, check out his show, mostly for millennials. All the links you need to get to Derek will be at DuncanTrussell.com. Much thanks to Squarespace.com for sponsoring this episode. And much thanks to Stamps.com for sponsoring this episode. If you like the DTFH, consider subscribing. Many people have reported that the moment they subscribe to the DTFH, they find themselves in a different version of the United States, where acid's legal. And Eddie Vedder's president. Try it out yourself. Subscribe. I love you guys so much. I'll see you very soon. Until then, Hare Krishna.